Amyloid fibrils are protein polymers made up of identical monomer units. Functional amyloids play a beneficial role in a variety of physiological processes. For example, in long-term memory formation, gradual release of stored peptide hormones, etc. Amyloidosis results from accumulation of pathologic amyloids in a variety of tissues. Most of these amyloids are aggregates of misfolded proteins. There are many types of pathologic amyloidosis. However, all of these types share some common characteristic features that enable the easy diagnosis of amyloidosis. All the types of amyloids have a fibrillar appearance when looked under an electron microscope, as you can see in this picture. And all the amyloids have a beta-plated sheet structure when observed by X-ray diffraction pattern. Amyloids have an amorphous, eosinophilic appearance on H and E staining. And they give an apple green biofringence on Congo red stain when looked under polarized light. And another most important feature, that they are resistant to digestion by enzymes, which leads to their accumulation and subsequent tissue damage. As already mentioned, amyloidosis is a clinical disorder caused by the deposition of insoluble abnormal fibrils that alters the normal function of tissues. Most of these deposits are extracellular. But, there is evidence that some deposits exist within macrophages and plasma cells. If we take the components of amyloid deposits, more than 90% of them consist of amyloid fibrils, which are made up of abnormal, misfolded proteins. About a 10% fraction of these deposits are composed of other substances like glycosaminoglycans, apolipoprotein E, and serum amyloid peptide. Amyloidosis results either from production of misfolded proteins in normal amounts due to various reasons or production of normal protein in excess amounts, where some of them undergo misfolding. Some of these amyloids aggregate locally and some of them aggregate at a distant site from their point of origin. Now let's discuss about the classification of amyloidosis. Historical classification systems of amyloidosis were clinically based. Modern classification systems are biochemically based. Most of the historical classification systems classified amyloidosis as primary, secondary, and hereditary amyloidosis. However, these classification systems are no longer being used. So, let's discuss about the modern classification system in more detail. All the amyloidoses are referred with a capital A, that is for amyloidosis, followed by an abbreviation for the fibril protein component. For example, in the condition previously termed primary amyloidosis, the fibril protein is an immunoglobulin light chain, which is denoted by capital L. I will explain about these light chains in more detail in the next section. So, patients with this type of amyloids are now said to have light chain amyloidosis, or AL. Similarly, in the conditions previously termed senile cardiac amyloidosis and familial amyloid polyneuropathy, the fibril protein is a transthyretin. So, these diseases are now collectively termed ATTR. Many different types of amyloids have now been identified. For the purpose of learning, they can be categorized into following types. But, it is important to note that there is much overlapping between these types. They include systemic amyloidosis, hereditary amyloidosis, CNS amyloidosis, ocular and other localized amyloidoses. First let's take systemic amyloidosis. Under this type, the most common form is amyloidosis, which was previously called secondary amyloidosis or reactive systemic amyloidosis. The precursor protein for amyloidosis is a normal sequence serum amyloid A protein, which is an acute phase reactant secreted by the liver in response to many cytokines, including interleukin-1 and 6, tumor necrosis factor, gamma interferon, and transforming growth factor. Amyloidosis typically occurs in conditions where the serum amyloid A production is high, including chronic inflammatory disease, chronic local or systemic infections, and occasionally with neoplasms. Some of the conditions associated with amyloidosis include the following. Rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, leprosy, still disease, Besset syndrome, renal cell carcinoma, Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and Castleman disease. 
Light chain amyloidosis is another type of systemic amyloidosis. Before we going into light chain amyloidosis, let's quickly see the structure of an antibody. Antibodies are made up of several types of peptides. Here is an image of an antibody. These two blue colored arms are the constant heavy chains of the antibody. And these two green arms are the constant light chains. Attached to the constant light chains, there are two variable light chains. Similarly, attached to the constant heavy chains, there are two variable heavy chains. Variable chains can undergo conformational changes in order to bind with different types of pathogens. The precursor protein for light chain amyloidosis is this kind of an immunoglobulin light chain, or a fragment of it. Light chain amyloidosis is a monoclonal plasma cell disorder, closely related to multiple myeloma, because antibodies are produced by the plasma cells. Light chain amyloidosis was previously termed primary amyloidosis. Major organs involved are the heart, kidney, peripheral nerves, and the gastrointestinal system. In some cases of immunoglobulin amyloidosis, the fibrils contain only heavy chain sequences rather than light chain sequences. Transthyretin amyloidosis is another major form of systemic amyloidosis. The precursor protein is a normal or mutant sequence transthyretin molecule. Transthyretin is a transport protein which is synthesized by the liver and choroid plexus that transports retinol and thyroid hormone in blood. Normal sequence TTR form amyloid deposits in the ventricles of elderly people. This type of amyloidosis was previously known as senile cardiac amyloidosis. Point mutations in the transthyretin gene also increases the tendency of amyloidosis. These types of amyloidoses are inherited as an autosomal dominant pattern. Amyloidogenic TTR mutations cause deposits primarily in the peripheral nerves, heart, gastrointestinal tract, and the vitreous. Signs and symptoms of transthyretin amyloidosis are often nonspecific. Most common presentations are polyneuropathy, chronic heart failure, and carpal tunnel syndrome. Autonomic nerves are often affected before motor nerves. Beta-2 microglobulin amyloidosis is also another important type of systemic amyloidosis. The precursor protein is a normal sequence beta-2 microglobulin, which is the light chain component of the major histocompatibility complex, which plays a vital role in antigen presentation. Beta-2 microglobulin amyloidosis is associated with patients on dialysis, and rarely, it can be seen in patients with renal failure who are not on dialysis. Beta-2 microglobulin is catabolized and excreted by the kidneys. So, in patients with decreased clearance, this protein can accumulate, leading to abnormal folding and amyloid deposition. These amyloids mainly deposit in joints, causing osteoarticular destruction. Conventional dialysis membranes are unable to remove beta-2 microglobulin. This is the reason for accumulation of this protein in dialysis patients. Amyloid deposits commonly occur in carpal ligaments, synovium, and bone, causing carpal tunnel syndrome, destructive arthropathy, bone cysts, and fractures. Other organs involved are the heart, gastrointestinal tract, liver, lungs, prostate, adrenals, and tongue. Hereditary amyloidosis encompasses a group of conditions that each are related to mutations in a specific protein. Transthyretin amyloidosis is the most common form which is usually neuropathic. We have already discussed about ATTR and systemic amyloidosis. Other types of hereditary amyloidosis include lysosome amyloidosis, fibrinogen amyloidosis, APOA1 and A2 amyloidosis, and gelsolin amyloidosis. CNS amyloidosis is also an important type. Under this, first let's discuss about beta protein amyloidosis. Amyloid beta precursor protein, which is a transmembrane glycoprotein, is the precursor protein in beta protein amyloidosis. In normal individuals, amyloid beta precursor protein has several important functions, including regulation of signal transduction mechanisms and regulation of neuronal growth and repair. It also promotes formation and degradation of neuronal synapses. In beta protein amyloidosis, proteolytic cleavage of amyloid beta precursor protein yields amyloid beta peptide, which accumulates and forms plaques in the cerebral cortex and cerebral blood vessels, causing Alzheimer's disease. 
Prion protein amyloidosis is another important type. Here, the precursor protein is a prion protein, which is a transmembrane glycoprotein. Etiology could be either infectious or non-infectious. Infectious prion protein is a homologous protein that is encoded by a host chromosomal gene. Infections with these prion proteins induces a conformational change in the native protease-sensitive protein, which increases the content of beta-plated sheets and subsequent amyloid deposition. Common conditions associated with the infectious type include kuru and transmissible spongy form encephalitis. Patients with non-infectious type carry autosomal dominant amyloidogenic mutations in the prion protein gene, leading to amyloidosis, even in the absence of an infectious agent. Common examples are Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, gerstmann strasseler schenker syndrome, and fatal familial insomnia. Examples for localized amyloidosis include gelsolin amyloidosis, which commonly affects the eyes. Atrial natriuretic factor amyloidosis, where the amyloid deposits are localized to cardiac atria. Here, the precursor protein is the atrial natriuretic factor. Lactoferrin amyloidosis, which commonly affects the cornea, calcitonin amyloidosis, and prolactin amyloidosis. There are many other types of amyloids which I have not discussed here. However, the most important types of amyloidosis that you should learn in detail are the following. Okay. That is all I wish to discuss in this video. Hope it made sense. If you have any question or doubt regarding this topic, feel free to post them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.